this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. I am going to be showing you how I paint this lovely design on glass candle holder. It's going to be, of course, a floral design. That's basically all I'm, what I do. And I'm going to be using red violet. All these are folk art products. And this one is Perfect Purple, Light Lavender, Citrus Green, Thicket, and Wicker White. The brushes I'm using for this design will be a number 12 flat brush, and this is a number 8 Filbert brush, Royal Aqualon. I mean, you can use any any of the brushes that you have. You don't have to use the same brand I'm using. If you're comfortable with the brushes you have, then that's what you need to use. And then I'm going to be using a dotting stylus. Paint. I'm going to go ahead and get loaded here. I should have done that first. I guess I'm kind of off track here. I don't know if you saw my, my very first live YouTube video, which was so exciting. But I did show you what designs I'm going to be doing uh, this week or transferring onto, onto a glass item, whether it be a candle holder or a bottle. I'm not really sure. I haven't planned that far ahead, so I apologize for that. But you just have to stay tuned and come visit me, and you'll see. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. If you like this video when you're done viewing it, give me a big thumbs up. And once you're done viewing the video, at the bottom of the video you will see a share button. This will allow you to share my video on your social network with all your family and friends. And I do apologize if my voice sounds funny. I do have a cold still working on working on that. But how I'm going to start with this design is I'm going to just base coat, just do a quick coat of paint in different spots on this face. Just not doing any special loading whatsoever. And this is what the violet, the purple violet, I believe it's called. Oh no, it's red violet. Sorry. So I'm just, and I want it to maybe have some rounded edges. I'll just do a few here and there. If you're new to my channel, please know that I do like to work with odd numbers. So you'll maybe see a few smaller versions of these because I don't have as much space to work with as I do on my paper when I'm doing my designs. As I mentioned, I did do just a real quick live video, kind of embarrassing, but uh, did that just to show you briefly what designs I worked on that I will be painting on glass. And it's they're basically I do the designs with the intent of using this as an inspiration, so it's not going to be identical as what you're seeing on the paper. And I like to use floral designs as inspiration. Stuff I find on Pinterest and then kind of create my own design based on what I'm seeing. If that makes sense, I hope so. Alright, so I've got that spread out. I'm not going to allow it to dry. I don't really care with the way I'm doing the design. If it mixes in or not, that's actually good. I'm taking my filbert brush and I'm just going to come through here and randomly place these these leaves or petals, I should say, on this. I am using the light lavender, the red violet, and the perfect purple. To make these petals with and wicker white not to forget that because I am throwing that in here too and I think I did forget a color when I was going through this 
uh, moon yellow. I'm going to add that too. As I mentioned when I first started the video, these are all folk art products. Some may be enamel, some may be the multi-surface. They're just a combination of both. I am trying to get switched over to uh, do multi the multi-surface since I like to paint on different surfaces. But in the meantime, sometimes they don't have the color I want available, so I might need to get it in the enamel so that I have it. And that's a reason for a change. Just if you're curious. If you're not curious, then forget what I just said. <laughs> Alright, if you have any questions or comments when you're watching this, please leave those comments down below. If you have any Thing that you'd like to see painted or any questions about me about how I do stuff, please let me know. I'm trying to be a little more creative with my channel. I'm just trying to come up with new ideas, things that might interest you. I thought maybe giving you a sneak peek of some of the things that I've worked on over the weekend, some of the designs that maybe that would spark your interest. You know, one thing I was thinking about was showing you, I want to try to come up with some sheets for you to do just for when you're working on, you know, design and you want to practice it, but sheets that you can practice and get, get training, get your hand trained on the movement, the feeling of creating the design, if that makes sense. And I put together a practice sheet a long time ago for my five petal flower. And then I, um, oh, what's it calling you? Cover it with plastic. Oh my goodness. My brain is like shut down for the day. Anyhow, I, I did that so that people could put their paintbrushes on it paint over it and get the feel for you know for the actual design. It's a matter of getting your, your hand to feel it if that makes sense. Sometimes it just takes a matter of sitting down and practicing whether you're practicing like the papers that I use to make my designs on. I just bought a bunch of paper on Amazon that was cheap and that's what I use. So when I'm trying to create a design, I can keep practicing, trying to come up with it. And then it doesn't cost me a lot of money, I guess is basically. That's why I always say that wax paper is good, has a similar texture. And I apologize, my furnace is getting ready to start up. The wax paper has a similar surface to it. So if you're practicing using that, You'll be able to flow your paint like you would on glass and then create the design and get a feel for it. Train your hand. Just like drawing. And if you like to draw or doodle, your hand kind of gets used to that movement. And you probably could do it in your sleep. I gotta be careful that I'm not touching my design on the paper below, which I have a tendency to do. Now, putting this on here, the way I'm doing it is just very random. If you want, you can do it in graduated color, meaning purpose, purposely do, like say, the perfect purple in one section, the red violet in another section and so on and graduate it to from dark to light, light to dark type thing. I'm not really concentrating on that so much. I'm just mixing it up as much as I can. And you can go back over it if you think it's too light in some areas, it's too dark in other areas. Uh, go ahead and, and go back over it. It's fine. But I'm just going to keep working on this here and then we'll add the greenery in. Granary is probably my favorite. And these can be, you know, you can do like a four petal flower, five petal flower, 
two petals, you know, if you're just trying to make it look like it's partially, maybe it's part of it's underneath the other flower next to it. Just real random, which is one reason I like this design so much. You don't have to be perfect, it's easy, an easy design for a newbie. Which, if you don't already know, that's what my, my channel is focused towards, new painters. I mean, I'm just a soft top painter. I don't, I do not have the degree or anything like that, which I'm sure someone that's trained can probably already tell that. But I like doing it for fun. I think that's my thing is to encourage people to kind of feed their creative side. Some people say they don't have one. Eh, I don't know how true that is. But if you want to have one, this will give you the opportunity to do something about it and have some fun at the same time. There, that's pretty. I think so. Now, when I'm painting, I do try to just do front side as much as possible um, for the purpose of the video. I'm not trying to do the whole thing. If I were to be creating this piece for myself or to sell, I would do the whole item. Carry that design all the way around. But because I'm just trying to do this for my video, I'm just doing it on part of it. Also, with your glass painting, please remember that it's important that you clean your glass off. I reuse my glass, so I'm not really that particular about cleaning it at this point, but I do reuse it and I paint, um, you know, wash it off and paint over it using the same, by the same glass as much as possible just to keep from uh, having to buy and keep adding paint to my paint and items to my home. I have a lot of glassware that I need to sell still. So my next step is to take the moon yellow. I'm not even going to tap it on my plate. I'm just going to keep it in, in the lid. Take my stylus and then I'm just going to go through and randomly dot. Now does it matter if it's actually really in the center of a flower? No, it doesn't. If you look at your piece and you say, hey, I think I need more dots over here, I have too many here, then that's fine. Add some more dots. Dot to your heart content. And I'm sorry if dotting on the glass bothers you, the sound of it. Um, so I'm just going to randomly keep doing this and turning it as I do it. And put the pieces on here. Hope that you like it. Do you like the idea of me giving you a sneak peek of designs coming up for the week? If you do, make sure you give me a yes down below. If you have any suggestions, please leave those below as I mentioned earlier. If there's any design you'd like to see me attempt, and I do mean attempt, because I'm not sure, you know, I'm not great at certain ones. I'm going to do my best, but I'm not afraid to try it. That's the main thing. Not afraid to try. And that's what I want you to be. Not afraid to try. Now, once you're done with your piece, if you're using the glass paint that I use, which again is folk art, enamels, and multi-surface paints, Please allow your item to air dry for at least half, or, sorry, at least an hour. I'm supposed to say half an hour, that's not right. And once it's air dried for that time frame, feel free to put it into a cold oven. Start the heating process, the preheat time. Varies from one oven to the next, keep that in mind. If you want to, um, preheat it and you don't know what 
what the temperature, uh, how long it takes to get to a preheat time, you know, to get to the actual bake time, then it he preheated at least 10-15 minutes. It's not going to hurt it to bake longer. I had a towel, but I don't know where it went to. Oops. Once you, you do that, you add the bake time, the preheat time to the bake time, and then when it's completed, when it's done baking, then you are going to need to allow for it to cool. That is very important. If you're a glass painter or going to be a glass painter, know that the sudden change in temperature is what can cause your item to crack. And trust me, you don't want your item to crack after you've spent a lot of time with it. You don't want it to crack. All right, so let's continue on with this. Once the oven is cool, then you bring your piece out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just, I'm going to put my little stems. I am using the thicket and the citrus green for my greenery. Um, I could hit it into some yellow if I want. I think right now I'm just going to stick with the green because I didn't really load any yellow. And I can pull that down like that. You just kind of have to randomly. Now if you're going to do it and you just want to have, have the leaves on it and you don't want to do the stems, that's fine. Especially when you're doing a vase, you may just want to do this and and uh, add the add the leaves. But I do like to put in a little bit of white. I am double loading it, and then we're going to pull down some of the little stems, little fun stuff. add to it and I'm using all the flat brush for this now I could actually come in here with a round brush or a liner brush and add these parts but I'm actually doing it with my flat brush I have a lot of control over my flat brush I guess I'm more used to using it than the other brushes so it's it's pretty easy for me Again, that's where when you're watching a video, you know where your strengths are. And if you don't have the strength, same strength as the person teaching the video, then do what you can. And how you do it, it's fine. It really is. You don't have to do everything exactly like somebody else. Just remember that. It's okay to be different. And so I'm just going to put some random leaves throughout. Even with this, I am going to be doing some different types of leaves. I'm not using all the same leaves. I do like the wiggle mine a lot, you'll notice. And that means you know, going back and forth like this instead of just straight with my, with my brush. Then I'm going to come up on this one and do some little blending strokes. And do this where I wave and I come down to the end. A little bit different, right? And that's good. Be yourself. It's okay to be yourself when you're painting. And if you see any leftover paint on mine, I just want to stress that it's because I it didn't come off when I was trying to wash it off. Okay, so I'm going to do this type of leaf. Go like this. And I like opaqueness because I like it to be um, a product that has more durability and the more I don't know, the more opaqueness would, would apply that there's more paint and the coverage will be better so your item is going to have more durability. Okay, and then you can, if you want to get fancy, you can flip your brush 
and do a leaf like that. I didn't do the ending very well, but a leaf like that. Sometimes it's difficult to do this on glass. Easier to do it on paper. That's okay. I don't know how I got. I guess I got a dot from the from the plant itself because I say I have yellow on my on my brush. Excuse me. Then we'll come over this direction. You just kind of have to eye it. Where do you want leaves? If you're a person like me, I like a lot of leaves. If you like it to be more sparse, then then make it more sparse. You just, I just want you to know that it's okay. You just don't have to follow, follow what somebody else likes. It's your creation. Make it yours. And sometimes I just have to kind of tap it a little bit instead of doing a free flow. Kind of tap the paint in a little bit so I don't pull the paint up or um, excuse me, sorry, I just, crazy cold, go like that, hopefully you can see, and this is what I mean, I can go, like some parts of it I can go real fast on it, and some parts I have to kind of, kind of just paint a little bit and bring it in. Now this leaf I'm doing is going to have, it's one of these leaves where it has light on one side, light paint, and then it's darker on the other side. You can see what I'm talking about here. And then I have lighter paint over here and darker paint over here. That's intentional. I didn't forget which side of the brush I was using. I did that on purpose. I'm not trying to be funny, but that is something you just have to understand that it, it is intentional. All right, so then let's go like this and bring some of these in. I can flip it so that there's darker up here and you can see the lighter like that. And then just maybe bring in a little stem. Wasn't wasn't exactly the way I wanted it, but we'll see here. Kind of fix it up a little bit. And then you can even just do some basic one stroke leaves. Add it in as fillers. So it's, the glass is, more, is fuller, like that. And then in, in here, you can do the same thing just to kind of fill it in a little bit. And you can make them smaller if you want to have smaller leaves. You, can, you know, use smaller brushes or, or less pressure, whatever works for you, you know, to create these different, different leaves with. We're gonna go out here and I'm just gonna put in some random leaves. And I hope you're getting a feel for it. If you're watching my videos, I hope that it helps you to get a feel for the glass painting. You know, some people think it's hard. I actually preferred to, to paint on glass because I thought the surface was easier to paint on with the flow of the paint. But then there's some people that think it's harder. So uh, let me know down below what you think with glass painting. If you're a fan of it, if you prefer to paint on glass, or if you're someone who feels like it's more difficult. You could also, on this type of a design, you could paint in some of the leaves prior to painting in the flowers. I, you know, that's nice. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Um, just for the fact that I kind of like when I'm doing the leaves to make them, give them some dry time. And with my videos, I like them to, oops, put them on the wrong side. I like to kind of keep them shorter. Okay, now this is another one. I started with the dark on the other side, and I'm going to do light on the opposite side. And then just pull it through. Like that. And then you can keep going. Somehow or another, I got paint on my hand. 
Uh, hopefully I didn't pull it off as something else. Alright, well, I think I'm going to stop for here, for it here, not for here, but for it here. I hope that, let me see if I got it as far away as I can, I hope that you like this video. It's meant to be easy. I hope you find it that way, and see I did not go all the way around. I just went partially. Very pretty design, very simple design, but simple can be pretty. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be difficult in order for it to be nice. If you like this, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And then after the video is complete, if you would, share my video on your social network with all your family and friends. I would appreciate it. Until the next time, hope to see you then. You have a good one.